Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Julia Wall. I'm the Director of Education at the Michigan Parkinson's Foundation. And um, we're very fortunate today to uh, have Dr. Peter Lewitt, a world-renowned movement disorder specialist, with us to share some breaking news in um, the therapy of uh, Parkinson's treatment today. Welcome, Dr. Lewitt. Well, nice to be here. Thanks for the invitation. So we understand that the FDA has just approved a new infusion-based uh, therapy treatment for Parkinson's disease. What type of therapy is this and how does it differ from oral therapy and what can you share with us? Well, the new therapy is actually an old drug that's been around in Parkinson care for more than 50 years. It's carbidopa and levodopa, levodopa, but in a new form, instead of taking it in pill form, which has a lot of irregularity in absorption and is re responsible for a lot of the fluctuations that so many people experience. This uh, concept is one of, of continuous delivery, consistently running through uh, a, an infusion uh, implanted under the skin. And this is something that is widely used in medicine these, these days. For example, insulin is given in this fashion through a small pump. In this case, it's a liquid form of carbidopa levodopa, the same product that's called Cinemet. And the idea here is to adjust the continuous infusion rate to exactly the needs of a patient who otherwise was taking oral medications. Uh, this product is made by AbbVie. And it's worth noting, although that this was improved, approved yesterday and uh, has been under review for several years, uh, two other products of similar nature are also under review by the FDA and could be approved in the near future. But the whole concept is to maintain a constant blood level of medication so that the ups and downs of the oral medicine regimen are avoided. Oh, so um, it will improve symptoms, decrease off time? Yes, exactly. So off time is defined as the failure of having adequate amount of the active ingredient of, of carbidopa levodopa, namely the levodopa comp component, and having a more constant level above its threshold for starting to work throughout the day is the, the goal to avoid off time or the emergence of Parkinson's symptoms. So it would improve symptoms like tremor, rigidity, stiffness, um, the typical symptoms that people struggle with? Yes, it'll, it will help with most of them. Keep in mind that not everything responds perfectly well to levodopa, no matter how you deliver it, so that some people, for example, will find that they have freezing of gait or balance problems or their voice isn't as loud and clear. So these uh, symptoms are sometimes thought of as partially or incompletely responsive to levodopa. All this uh, therapy offers is a way to make more consistent responses to those things that the oral medication also accomplishes. Well, um, this is a 24-hour continuous therapy. So... Um, would it be realistic to expect that sleep disturbances would um, not be a problem with this kind of treatment? Well, it's, it's uh, capable of 24-hour infusion. I think most people who will be using this uh, might take it off at nighttime. Uh, just to describe its delivery system, it's a small needle that's put under the skin, usually in the abdomen, and hooked up to a small pump. Uh, patients will get full training on how to use this and how to adjust the dose if they need to. But uh, I don't think most people will need it for nighttime, and it really doesn't help with most of the sleep problems associated with Parkinson's. It can help with tremors that might come out during the night. If someone needs medication to get out of the bed to get to the bathroom, it may help to keep you in a more on state during the night when oral medicine has long since worn off but I have a feeling that most people are gonna be using just during uh, their waking day. And uh, because of this delivery system um, and it, it is bypassing the intestines, does that um, affect any people that might have problems with protein and absorption with their oral medication? Yes, that's exactly uh, the main problem we think with respect to the oral medication, which is absorbed but does so on the timetable of your stomach and your small intestine, deciding that it's time to absorb the medication. And that irregularity contributes to most of the problem of the ups and downs of motor fluctuations of off time. So this may help greatly because it is uh, the, the continuous infusion on the skin bypasses the need for the stomach to take up the medication. But it isn't the 
whole end of the problem. In fact, in the studies, uh, off time uh, in patients who were being investigated decreased substantially, but it didn't go away completely. There are other factors that contribute to being under medicated throughout the day or evening. And unfortunately, we haven't really figured out uh, what is the culprit for all of the uh, fluctuations, such as freezing of gait. Mm -hmm. Is there any type of criteria someone needs to meet to be able to get this medication once it's available? Well, I think uh, that's yet to come. The approval by the FDA doesn't mean the drug is available uh, for your use tomorrow. And it's unclear when its marketing will begin or criteria that will be attached to it by third party drug payers, Medicare and so on. And in fact, it will be an expensive therapy and, and the choice to use it probably it will be predicated on the failure of doing well on oral medications. And very often just changing the timing of medication, increasing the dose, possibly switching to a longer acting formulation will solve some of the problems of motor fluctuations. So this isn't the only option that's available. It's, it's one that will be very valuable for people who have failed these other measures, but it's an opportunity to assess whether your consistency as a patient to levodopa could be improved just by tinkering with the schedule and the dose of medication you're already on, and then look upon this as one of the last resorts. It's different than deep brain stimulation, and it is a, a treatment that you can put on to your use every day or not use it, just go with oral medications. But because of its expense and uh, the cumbersomeness, and, and some people just don't like needles, uh, it may have reasons that that some people will not choose to use it if, even if they have the problem of motor fluctuations. And yet we have another tool in our toolbox, which is a direct result of research and how important it is, correct? Absolutely. And people in our community participated in research for this product and have participated in trials of apomorphine, another medication that's currently under review by the FDA, also delivered under the skin uh, by the same kind of pump. So research has really led to improvements in quality of, of control. There are other medication approaches out there also being developed. I just uh, attended a Mark Michael J. Fox uh, therapeutics pipeline meeting yesterday and some other exciting things are coming our way to, to help out in the fight against Parkinson's. Well, I think that's the most important message we can deliver today is how important it is to get involved with research. Um, and if you are not involved in research, where would one go to, um, to sign up or learn more? Well, we have several centers in Michigan that are doing studies of various sorts, studies that are targeted at improving the consistency of medication effect, like, like this new product that now has come to market, and uh, even studies that are ongoing to improve diagnosis, as well as uh, trying to go against the mechanisms that might be causing Parkinson's or genetic forms of it. Uh, Quest Research is one uh, institution that I work with, along with Dr. Aaron Ellenbogen in Farmington Hills. Uh, there are a few other studies around the state, and um, I think Michigan Parkinson Foundation would be a good resource to find out where they are. Yes, and obviously um, we're grateful to the Michael J. Fox Foundation for funding a lot of these studies and bringing awareness to people with Parkinson's. Um, and I'm sure they can go to the Michael J. Fox Foundation as well to find out more information. They have the Fox Binder trial, I believe. Yeah, that's a nice uh, option for those who are interested in research because you can register what your symptoms are, your medication, how long you've had Parkinson's, your uh, location and interest in participating in research. And then from that listing, uh, those who are doing studies can consult with it. And, and uh, it's sort of like a matchmaker for research without any obligations tied into it. Well, this is great. Um, I know that we just heard about this new approval with this medication and we wanted to get uh, expert opinion about it and we appreciate you taking the time. Anything else that you wanna share with us or uh, any exciting news? Well, I'm, you know, it's funny on Monday, uh, Tuesday, I was uh, meeting with a patient and I said, you know, a new therapy is likely to be approved by the FDA one of these days soon. Someone who was having a lot of problems with involuntary movements and, and off time and optimized oral medicine just wasn't cutting it. And little did I know that in, you know, two or three days later, uh, this 
new therapy has now become potentially available. We can't say it's to be available even this month or next month, but it's coming and it will certainly help a lot of people for whom even deep brain stimulation doesn't solve the problem. Great. Well, thank you for everything you do, Dr. Lewitt. It's exciting that we can bring new information, but I think more than anything, hope to people with Parkinson's disease. And uh, for anybody looking for more information, you can contact the foundation or go to Michael J. Fox Foundation and read more about it. Thank you for your time. Well, thank you for great questions. And uh, MPF is always the great source of information. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, Dr. Lewitt. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.